Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, life coach and meditation coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ron Johnson, your mental health coach and future therapist. I'm going to school to get my psychology degree to become a therapist. And welcome to another episode or episode five of Life's a Shuffle with Jesse Lucas, Embodiment Movement. I call this the those Star Trek fans out there to boldly go where no one has gone before and the final frontier. So Jesse, welcome back to Life's a Shuffle podcast. I am so happy to be back with you guys. We always have such rich conversations. Thank you for having me back. Thank oh, you. Back. Thank you. So how's it been since our last episode? How have you been well, doing? I will tell you, and you know, we were chatting a little bit before hitting record. My my life has been a matter of practicing what I preach and putting my work to work. And, you know, one of the things about embodiment practices and just self-awareness and personal growth, whether you're talking about mental health, physical health, emotional health. I don't know if it's ever really the final frontier. <laughs> been um, it's been a challenging season in my my personal life and in my family, and I really had to dig in to the tools that I work with and use them in new ways, which actually is really relevant to the, the topics we are going to be talking about today. So I'll I'll tie in some stories as as we continue here. Yeah, I guess Star Trek. It's not. It's, it's just not not the final frontier, but to boldly go where no one has gone before. Right? Yes. Embodiment movement. I've been in some new territory. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <For sure>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think with the ever changing landscape, just life is transitory. Anyways, everybody's trying to navigate new ground. Uh, I give a little kind of metaphor slash analogy with my clients. It's like it's, it's like. You know, you have a runway, right? So do you want to be international runway or a little commuter runway, right? So you're always building new runways, just like international airport. They have to build new runways to make sure everything can come right on in. And sometimes we're just in building mode and sometimes we're in paving mode and sometimes we're in finalizing mode. And that's this kind of life that is transitory, forever changing and environments are forever changing. We are forever changing as individual people. You know, I'm going to take that metaphor and I'm going to tie into that as we continue this conversation because a lot of what I am working with in embodied movement is building new pathways. So, or that, you know, or those runways. So, if the patterns, the, the avenues, the methods, the ways, the, the biomechanics, the emotional patterns, the neuro pathways, if, if all of these aren't getting you where you want to go, I used to say, you know, in a, in a phase in my life where I felt like I was working really, really hard with a lot of grit, a lot of tenacity, a lot of sweat equity, and I was not getting where I wanted to go. And I was working with a coach at the time. And she's like, you know, if you're trying to get to LA, but you're pointed in the direction of Chicago, 
no matter how far you go and how long you persist, you're not getting to LA. <laughs> so building new pathways, building new runways, that is absolutely what this kind of body awareness and self-awareness can can give you. It sure can. More ne neuroplasticity, right? The more mm -hmm. you learn, the more you grow, the more you grow, the more you learn and so forth and so on. Um, I know it's been a while since we shot our last episode. Um, so talk about that a little more and we'll go right to strengthen and refine. Absolutely. So to bring this all into context, so, you know, I'm a yoga teacher, I'm a personal trainer, I'm a mom and, you know, whole well-being has always been very important to me. And one of the things that I saw along the way in my own growth path and in my clients and in my students was kind of that same concept of, of working hard but not really getting satisfactory results. And that could be in really any category, whether you were trying to lose weight or build muscle or gain flexibility or heal a broken heart or get out of a pattern of anxiety and depression or, or release some trauma. And what I realized working in the movement space is a lot of people were kind of coming in at this last step, the step that we're going to talk about today, the strengthen and refine, and hadn't done kind of the softening and dismantling and rearranging that is required to kind of re-navigate, get yourself pointed in the direction that you want to go. And in our body systems, we have all of these, our, our bodies run on habit. Like that's how they're designed. If not, if we had to think about every little step along the way, I think I mentioned this in a previous recording, we wouldn't get anywhere. We wouldn't be able to do anything. So we learn these patterns, whether it's how to reach for your glass of water across the table or your gait when you walk or your reactions when you're talking to people. And unless we release some tension and get quiet and create an element of safety so that we are responsive instead of reactive. And then we can start to really gain some awareness of what those patterns are. And if we need to realign them, that's the only way we can. If we soften around them, think if, you know, if you I uh, equate this to kind of chiropractic work sometimes. If your back muscles are all tense and you've got a vertebrae out of alignment, that chiropractor can try and push it back into alignment and maybe have success, but all of those tense muscles are going to pull it right back into that misalignment. So where we're getting to today is the strengthening and refining the skills once you have kind of done that softening and and creating your body as an environment of safety, gaining some self-awareness, that releasing, and then any realigning to get you in a place where energy can flow freely, where you feel good in, in your body, in your heart, in your mind. And then because we run on those habits, unless we strengthen around that new alignment and learn how to navigate any anything that comes down the line. And you know, this is what we've been talking about. Life keeps lifing on you. It keeps happening. So you need to really refine those skills in order to maintain and keep growing in this elevated state, this this better version of you that you've worked so hard to create. So that's that brings us to to where we are now. I love the analogy of the chiropractor. So I've had clients in personal training and you, you recommend a chiropractor or you recommend they go see somebody and they think, oh, it's one thing one time fixed. I said, actually, no, you're not. It, it takes some time to, to get the muscles to readjust because you've been in this tight position for a period of time, right? Dealing with it. It's not an overnight quick fix. Your muscles within a week will go back to where they were. So however, if you can't go to a chiropractor every day, but you can do certain maintenance on a regular basis, you know, stretch and and take care of yourself, eat right. So the times you, so the benefit of going to a chiropractor, the benefit of stretching, all these benefits will add up. It's not just only that and that's it. No, it's every little step along the way, it adds up to a better change. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And then this is the part where you can become what I call responsible, response able. You are able to respond. It kind of brings the autonomy of your own health and well-being back to you, which if you've kind of gone through this methodology, isn't so much of a chore or a burden, but really an empowering thing. And, you know, I had a situation, you were asking me how the last, you know, couple months have gone. I had a situation where I had some ribs out of place. Maybe this is why chiropractic is on my my mind because I had to utilize mine. Um, and I had some ribs out of place. And he got him back in place and it took a couple of visits. But it really made me look around to my environment saying, what am I doing? Because this is the second time it's happened in six months and this has never happened before. You know, alignment, good posture, good form. That's kind of my jam. And I walked into my home office one day and it was like, as if a spotlight was shining on my desk chair. And I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> like mm-hmm. that thing, that thing has got to go. <laughs> and I realized I've done more sitting in the past two years than I than I ever have in my entire adult life. So I got rid of my chair, actually gave it to our 11-year-old who needed a desk chair and she really liked mine. So she was happy as a clam to get that. And I bought one of those big you know, exercise balls to sit on. But this is one of those things where I realized my environment's different. The tools that I used before aren't supporting me now. I've brought in some new tools that I thought were good. You know, I got to build this home office from scratch. I really liked what I was doing, but something I chose wasn't really supportive. And so I had to make some changes. So making choices that support your best sense of well-being is all part of this building those habits of choosing things that strengthen your feeling of empowerment, strengthening your sense of power in living in your own body and being able to tweak that along the way because it is not a one and done thing. It surely is. And it's, it's funny about that too. So, you know, my jobs have changed over the years from personal training to, you know, personal training slash coaching. Then now I'm just coaching full time. So I'm sitting seven to eight hours a day just sitting and I was going through the same thing. So I had to get, I had to get a right stand. I had, I'm getting, I had to get a new chair because this chair is just not working for me. Even though I, it's just only like four months old, but you hit something that kind of resonate with me and what I try to tell people, right? So we, we as human beings really tend to point at other things, right? Saying, okay, if this change, I'll feel better. If that change, I'll feel better, okay? And we're often consumed with pointing out what needs to be changed in order to feel better. However, we never think about intuitively what we can control. So I had a client yesterday that I was coaching and, you know, there's some issues at home and all this stuff. So my question was, okay, so it seems to me your, your environment, which is your home, causes you a lot of friction. Okay. So what can you control? This is my question. What can you control that's in your environment at home? It's funny. Immediately, oh, well, I should go more hiking. I said, hold on, hold on. Let's go back to the question again. The environment is your home. What can you control in your environment? What can you take control of in your environment? You can't control every single thing, right? But what can you control? And the client was actually lost for words because mm. I had to bring him down because he's always, oh, well, if I did this, if I did this, because the client always says, well, I, I feel better if I hike. I'll feel better if I, um, I don't know, go out and hang out with friends. I'll feel better. I'll feel better. However, the secret is he never does it anyways. So you want you always seem to make you feel better, but you don't do it. Okay, why not, right? Then I asked him, because then now we're exploring and and, and the environment is the issue. And the idea is I have to accept, I have to accept. Well, you don't. You can't control certain things in your environment. Even on a micro scale, you can control it because it creates a snowball effect where you get better and better and better. That's it. Yeah, so only you can make a difference, right? Uh, I mean, we're so... I think like um, I've also, it's been observed or we've seen this where, and we can all relate to this, that we are able to define others or help others. But when it comes to us, we're unable to do so. Right. Isn't the truth. 
I think that really, you know, that speaks to that responsible part and that that empowerment and self autonomy. So I'll tell you a little story. I don't remember if I've said this, told this story on your podcast before. If I did, it's worth repeating in the context of this topic because this is how I kind of started to unpack this approach, this embodiment and release, realign, strengthen, refine. So I had a moment. I forget how many years ago this was. I was on the heels of a divorce, which of course that's even if it's the right move, it's a hard one. And <clears throat> excuse me, realizing the marriage that I was in did a lot of psychological and emotional damage. And it was one of those situations that you don't really realize how bad it is when you're in it until you get out of it and then you get that 2020 vision of like, oh, wow, how did how did that go on for that long? So I was in a phase of kind of, I don't want to say lost, but, you know, fi- finding myself anew. And it happened to be at a time when I, as far as professionally, I only had the yoga training piece. I didn't have the personal training piece yet. And a gym where I worked, there was a personal trainer who was leaving the area and moving on. And the owner of the gym said, hey, you know, if you go get your personal training certification, we will offer this clientele base to you. Because I guess, you know, I had kind of a similar personality as the trainer who was leaving. And it was a time that I needed more bookable hours, taking care of my my two kiddos as a single mom by myself. And I wasn't really a fan of fitness at that point in my life. I thought it was a place of ego. Everyone who came from the fitness floor into my yoga class were all like in overuse injuries and muscle imbalances. But I put down my perception and thank goodness that I did. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll do it. I, you know, this kind of fits a need for me right now. I'll do it. So I'm studying for this personal training exam and I'm practicing what was foreign to me moves, you know, really basic like bicep curls overhead, your basic fitness moves, but they weren't yogi moves. So they were, they were new to me, but I was learning them how I knew to learn movement, which through yoga was really paying attention to your presence in your body and paying attention to your breath and paying attention to any emotions that arise as you move. And it was so silly. I would go and like hide in this upstairs back corner of the gym in a room no one really went into because I was like, I felt silly doing these moves. But it gave me the privacy, which ties back to creating an environment of safety. So I was by myself and I was was practicing these fitness moves and I'm picking up these weights and mind you, they were not very heavy weights. I'm a tiny little string bean of a person. And I was looking at myself in the mirror, checking my form, really thinking about what I was doing. And all of a sudden, I had this kind of combustion moment where from somewhere within, I heard, I feel strong. And it wasn't like coming from my brain. It was just this inner sense. And my interpretation of that was, I feel strong. And all of a sudden, like that message went up to my brain and my brain goes, yes, that is a feeling of strength. And it was the first time that that kind of positive message got a thumbs up from my brain after all of this psychological and emotional damage that I had been through and trying to rebuild myself. And, you know, I had a meditation practice. I had, you know, affirmation, all of these things. And everywhere I looked, I did not feel strong. I was gritty. I would work until the day was done. I kept up my house. I kept up my kids. You know, so from the outside, it looked like I was strong. Everybody would tell me I'm strong and I'll get through but I never felt it inside. And when I lifted up those weights and I felt it from the inside, that I did that and my brain agreed because it was true. It's like, holy cow, this is like amazing. Like you can create these feelings from within. You don't have to rely on those external resources like you both were saying that this is how I now look at strengthening. And of course, you know, it's fun when you have 
goals and you want to get, you know, whether it is for a big hike, I live in the the Northeast of the United States, people like to go hiking around here, you know, or, you know, any sort of challenge or it's fun to train for that kind of strengthening. But what's really incredible is really navigating your presence in your own body and your habits in your own daily life to create a feeling from within. And that is how I've taught strengthening ever since is what are the moves going to be in your life right now? And I'll tell you, however many years later, my life is different right now. I'm not repairing from leaving a toxic marriage. I, you know, the the I'm I've reached midlife. My my body's doing some different things, you know. And this is where that refine piece comes in, is that strengthening, let's call it 10, 15 years ago, looks different. For me than it does today. It looks different for me on a hormonal level, on an emotional level, on what my body requires of me on a day-to-day basis level. And I ask you know, my clientele and the communities that I serve, when you are really thinking about strength, I want you to think about it in all of these capacities and take any external expectations out of it. And I want you to choose whether it's daily habits in life or or moves in your home workout routine or whatever it is that you do that can create the environment where that kind of internal combustion can take place so you non-negotiably from the inside out feel, I feel strong or I feel empowered or I got this or I'm okay or whatever whatever that is for you the, in that realm. And it's a whole different way. It's a whole different way of looking at strength. Oh, it totally yeah. is. <clears throat> it doesn't. And I like that. So what I've gotten out of that is the person you want to be is already within you. Yeah. It and is. it's already <clears throat> within you and maybe it's tangled up in some patterns back, you know, back to those patterns and pathways and runways. Like, you know, maybe you got some wrong directions along the way. Yeah. Um, but it's in there. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're often seeking, and this is with everybody seeking of what happiness is and what success is, but also at the same time, we're seeking that answers from the outside. You know, we're it, we're listening to, we're, we're looking for that answer from the outside, from people around us, the environment, just like what you said. But I look at us like um, we are like this these raw diamonds that are that are unaware of their shine until they are shaped and refined. So it's kind of like what you were saying there is you didn't realize until you felt that strength within you that that's who you are and that's who you want to be. The person, the kind of person that you want to be. The the other, that unique version that you have within yourself. Yeah, and what's hilarious is that it came through finding you know, traditional fitness, which is something I looked down my nose at. <laughs> so not even, you know, wasn't on my radar. I was like pushing it away. I was like, I am not interested in walking through those doors. And, you know, a different life circumstance kind of led me to that. And all right, well, I mean, when I tell you I went into to the fitness field kicking and screaming, I really, it was not something I was interested in. And yet, It was the thing that allowed for that sensation to happen. So now at this chapter, you know, a new chapter in my life, because this is, this is what happens. You know, you either try new things and you get a result. You feel better. You have more energy. You, you know, your life changes. You're on a new trajectory. You're heading to LA instead of Chicago. if That's where you wanted to go. Or it doesn't. And it's, you know, that can be really frustrating. And so whether you got to where you wanted to go, time passes, and then life changes. So like, you know, here we are. I don't even know if post-pandemic is the right term because we're, you know, we're still navigating a very different world right now while life is going on. You know, my family's dancing around a a health crisis in our family and, you know, other, other stressors going on. Or if, if what you tried didn't get you where you want to go and you hit frustration, this is where 
it is so important to kind of come back to those initial concepts of release and dismantling tension and soothing your nervous system and creating or finding environments of safety so that your nervous system can be responsive. Because if you are stuck in that fight, flight, or freeze mode, you know, you're pumping out cortisol and you're, you're increasing that tension, you're not going to be able to refine and make the little tweaks in your movement habits, your daily habits that allow for you to keep going and keep going in a way that is uplifting instead of draining. You know, if I look around at my life right now, there's so much that's good. And yet it also kind of feels like a return to, oh gosh, like something really kind of bad and hard is going on and it's changing things. So it's bringing me back to some of those things that I felt at that time in my life. And I realized I've built some skills since then. And I've, I mean, there's been some moments in the past few months that I have not been great <laughs> at, at walking my talk, but I saw it loud and clear right away. Like, oh, that is an old pattern. That is an old runway that is going to like Siberia. And I do not want to go there. And I was able to get off. You know, I made a BB got on the vehicle and started heading down that runway, but I was able to pull the emergency brakes. So this, what's really cool about when you do these kinds of things somatically, I think the, one of the things in this going where, where no one has gone before, these are, these are the real high level skills of realizing, you know, when I entered this path, I had a meditation practice. And so I felt ahead of the game. You know, I found meditation in college and, you know, as a young 20 something, I was like, I am, I am so ahead of the game. But what I didn't realize, this is another thing that bringing in fitness did for me because I, you know, I, I was like, oh, all right. And then I added yoga. I was like, all right, I've got a physical routine. I've got a mindfulness routine. What I didn't realize when I brought in the fitness stuff is I didn't feel strong in my own body. Some of the moves fitness required for me that yoga didn't, that meditation didn't. I was like, oh, there were things missing that I didn't even know were missing because I wasn't exploring these realms. I wasn't asking these kinds of things in myself. So when you dial these things in somatically, meaning in your body, soma is body. When you dial these things in somatically, it relieves your poor little tired mind, it relieves your brain, it relieves some of those other body systems so that you're not relying only on those practices to get you through. And these somatic practices, these body practices are really what creates those patterns, those pathways, those runways that influence the neuroplasticity, plasticity that influence changing emotional patterns. So I see it as essential, as an essential part, you know, where mindfulness has been a a big topic for the last decade or so. And I'm so grateful that it is. And I think the last several years, we're seeing a lot more about emotional intelligence. And I think that this really learning to be empowered in how you feel in your body, whatever, and this doesn't mean, you know, a specific physique or BMI, I'm not talking about any of that but really feel empowered and stable in your body and knowing the tools that when you do find yourself on the wrong runway to pull that emergency brake, back it up and make some changes. You know, when you have these patterns in your body, when your mind is stressed, no matter how much meditation you're doing, you can, you can rely on the signals of your body to tell you, hey, something's off here. Time to, time to make a change. Um, is. Yeah, a quick question on this one. So with, with like I said in, in the beginning, with many of us seeking, you know, answers, right? How can one have that type of awareness that this this is what I need to do? I, I need to make these changes. What would your advice be? Oh, gosh, this one of the things I would say is there are so many avenues to that level of awareness. and 
to not stress out if something that's working for somebody else isn't working for you. Um, so for example, when I was really diligent about my my meditation and my yoga practice, I didn't know my my blind spot was in this whole sense of of strength and empowerment and autonomy. And I would look at my friends who were doing affirmations and doing all these cool spiritual practices and getting amazing results. And I felt discouraged. I felt discouraged because I was doing the same things they were and falling flat. And so one thing I would recommend is to be open, to be open to exploring zones you might not have explored before, trying old things, kind of dusting them off if there are some practices that you have in your back pocket that you haven't taken out in a while. And I think the most simple answer to this question is to kind of check the different categories. So if you're feeling like something's off and you're just not getting the signals, some of the different categories you can look at are the mindfulness category. And I know you too are really hot on this one. So does your mind need a little space? Do you need some to create some calm and quiet so that you can hear, so that you can sense and detect the quieter voices that aren't cutting through the noise of stress or strain or whatever's off? Your heart is another category I would look in. If you are dealing with a broken heart or just some really, really heavy heart stuff, often getting help is the thing to do. Having someone else kind of hold some heart space with you, having a trusted person, whether that's a friend or a coach or a therapist or a peer, a colleague, because a heavy heart, Sometimes I, I like to think we're not meant to hold a heavy heart by ourselves. It's, it's too heavy. It's too much. And so if that heavy heart, if you are really trying to carry it around all by yourself and you're taking all of your energy and resources to do that and you're not getting the awareness, the signals aren't, aren't cutting through that darkness – I really, I really think this is where, you know, community and helping each other can come in. And then the other avenue of our kinesthetic sense of self, our body sense of self. So I would look to the mindfulness place. I would look to the heart place and I would look to the body place. And if you are not sleeping well, if you are physically tense, like your neck and shoulders hurt, you get headaches, hips hurt, uh, your flexibility isn't great, you have chronic pain or, you know, some health issue that maybe you weren't taking care of, you know, finding, figuring out, and often people know, like, at least what the first step to do is like, all right, I got to stretch or I got to start taking walks or I got to, you know, make an appointment to get this thing checked out or I got to get on my foam roller or whatever it is. But to start to Create your body as a place where the signals can come through. And on that level, the thing you can do is take a moment that this practice, and this is my key staple practice that I, I use with my students and my clients. It's, it's kind of a specific way of doing a body scan. You know, so you guys are probably familiar. You know, just take a moment, just pause what you're doing, maybe close your eyes take a few deep breaths and just kind of notice how you feel. And you might notice your shoulders are up to your ears or you're clenching your fists or even your toes, or you can relax your hips a little bit, but then you can take that to a, another more specific level and just let your attention kind of wander in the inner landscape of your body until a specific sensation comes to your attention, maybe one that is after you've done that initial scan, you notice that the kind of surface layer, more obvious things. And then often there's, there are signals firing like, huh, I didn't really realize like I've got a pain in my knee that wasn't there or my stomach 
feels kind of fluttery or, you know, things that were hiding under the radar. And not that you necessarily have to do anything with that information, but just that practice of taking a couple of minutes to pay attention, get kind of check off all those initial things that you feel, and then go in another layer. The more you do that, it's like someone fine-tuning the navigation system on that plane that's getting on that runway. The more those, the more you pay attention to those signals, the more those neuromuscular and the, the signals that come from your interoception, it's called the signals that come from within your body, all of these things, it's like turning on the lights to what was otherwise a dark room with like the electricity cut off. And so that's my, I, you know, took a little bit longer on that one because that's, that's where I work. That's, that's my most exciting place to, to work. But I would, you know, if you're not getting those signals and you want to build the awareness, putting it into those three categories, let's check in with my mind, let's check in with my heart and let's check in with my body and see what major blocks are in the way of letting those signals get through and what is one little thing I can do. You know, on the mindfulness thing, obviously a couple of min- minutes of meditation is a great place to start. And there's apps for that. If it's in the heart, get some help. Don't carry it all on your own. And if it's in your body, start to fine tune that inner sense of awareness just by paying attention and just by noticing how you feel. And your body will start to tell you a lot of really helpful things. Yes. You know what? Um, This is so, I like how you kind of swung into talking about where you can find those spots, spot them, right? Because what's experienced and what's held in mind is experienced through the body. So I like how you can spot check it. (coughs) Yep. (coughs) Excuse me there. (laughs) Spot. Yeah, side spot across. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So my, my question is, Often it's time, it, often people dampen those signals because they're not loud enough, right? They're not beaming, right? How do you not dampen those signals so you can actually pay attention before it's too late? Oh gosh, this this is the extra, extra hard part. I mean, you know, we said walking your own talk is is hard. How to not dampen those signals is hard. It's hard because our the way our bodies work is, you know, we, we're in this interesting era of thriving. Like everybody, you go on social media and it's all about thriving. And our bodies and our brains are not designed to first thrive. We are designed to first survive, which means our initial instincts and reactions are going to be reactive and protective so that we survive. And oftentimes those kinds of things are painful. You know, if you think about fight, flight, freeze, what your body goes through to do that, we tense up muscles, we divert energy from things like digestion and reproduction. So thrivey things, you know, nourishment and pleasure. And we divert energy from that to your major muscles. So you can get out of dodge. And or or freeze, you just kind of stop. And when you when you know this, think about that, the possum, you know, playing dead and you know, physically freezing. What I'm seeing a lot and have experienced somewhat of myself is when you go into that freeze response for too long, you kind of go dead inside. And then you don't have a lot of material to work with because you've lost yourself. And unfortunately, I think um we are seeing a lot of this right now, and it is a hard place to come back from. It is possible. It is, it is so worth it, and that's why conversations like this, they can be the, the lifeline to pull you out of a place like that. But those painful places, all we want to do is stop the pain. So what do we do? We do something that anesthetizes. We take a, you know, something that will mitigate the pain. Um, whether that is a you know like a drug you know take Advil or or something stronger or we drink to so our brains that those section of our brains don't pay attention to that or we find other habits to 
to dampen the painful noises instead of soothing them, instead of tending to them so that we can hear the other signals. So I don't want to sugarcoat this part because how do we not dampen so we can hear the more progressive signals from ourselves? This is hard. I think uh, in our culture, you know, you look at every billboard, every commercial, every, you know, what our our friends are doing and, you know, it's a culture of dampening that pain without supporting the exploration to fully feel and to fully embody and to fully be present. So I think on one hand, it's conversations like this, podcasts like this that are going to create a new culture that are creating spaces for that kind of exploration and support. So I think that's one level. I think we're on a slow train to, to changing the culture to support this kind of thing. You know, you look at older cultures and, you know, they send people out on these, these quests and these, these challenges. And not that I'm an expert on that, but I think one of the things that that kind of thing does is it makes you face the hard things without vices so that the only thing you can do is feel your way fully through it. So if you're an intense kind of person, (laughs) you can do that. You can just kind of decide, hey, you know what? I've I've had it with not feeling like my full self. I'm going to identify what my vices are, the ones that are dampening my ability to sense myself, and I'm going to drop them. And whatever that means, whether that's a cold turkey kind of drop or a wean or getting support or whatever that means. And and that's a that's a pretty intense way to stop dampening. It's the right way for some people and not the right way for others. I think if that is not your journey, there's, there's a few good choices. One, my favorite that I keep coming back to these days is asking for help and finding a community where this kind of exploration does occur. And that might be a yoga class. That might be a meditation community. That might be a support group. That might be creating a peer group and all kind of going in on it together. And maybe you find a a book that resonates and, and you go through that together and you start to make decisions on, all right, well, what's a good next step? Five minutes of meditation in the morning. Okay. What's the next good step? You know, and taking it from there. If you're on your own and you're like, I can't even, I don't even know who to reach out to and I can certainly not rip the Band-Aid, how to stop dampening is to start to slow down. Honestly, things, you know, life is moving very fast right now. Technology moves fast. All, you know, everything around us is moving so fast. And even if you feel like you can't, slow down. And I get it. I spent a long time as a single mom to two growing boys, homeschooling and an entrepreneur and, you know, working in the the fitness and yoga space, going to this studio, that studio. I didn't, I, you know, I had animals on my property, I had gardens. I, I did not think slowing down was possible. And what I found was tiny little moments to just breathe. Sometimes it was while I was doing the dishes and I would turn off the water and I would take a few deep breaths. And I, the more and more I practiced that kind of pause, I would do it when I got in my car and I would just pause for a moment, think about where I am, think about where I'm going. Those little mini pauses started to create some space. One of my favorite quotes, it's attributed to Viktor Frankl. It says, between stimulus and response, there is space. In that space is your power, your power to choose your response. And in your response lies your growth and your freedom. And so I think all of the dampening of you know of the, these pain, the stresses, the accumulation of stuff that does not feel like your best self, It's just a matter of starting to create little tiny spaces until you can open up those spaces just a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And then you have that room to 
to have that response and power and therefore freedom. I love that. You know, it's unfortunate. I think deep breath is unfortunate that our society is built on masking, mask, 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 mask. And what we do is that we do the volcano effect. We constantly dampen, dampen, dampen. And eventually that rumbling below, like a volcano does, it will explode. It could be the most mundane things, dish left in the sink, car didn't start. Your husband didn't say, husband, wife, or whoever didn't say good morning that, that, that morning. It could be the most mundane things because we have been avoiding something. So we think about why am I getting mad over something like this so small? Because we've been avoiding something. We've been looking for the instant gratification. We've been looking, well, just white knuckle it through and keep going forward instead of acknowledging the pain we're suffering and what we're feeling and what it's meaning and, and taking that break, right? Instant gratification will always be there. It's been that around for thousands of years. It will always be there and still be around. However, you may not be around for thousands of years. However, you don't know what's going to be affected by you not acknowledging your feelings and uh, what needs to be done and, and self-care. What can be happening is that you just keep moving forward and the relationships that can, can crumble because you don't take care of yourself. So that's how you refine by looking into where it's at. Where am I feeling the most anguish? Where am I feeling most frustration? Where can I change? What's in my control? I love that, Jesse. Now, as, as we get to end our podcast and we can go on for hours, right? I love talking about this stuff because what a breath of fresh air, what knowledge you're getting, people are gaining by listening to this podcast and what knowledge we're gaining, right? We're all teachers and students at the same time. What is the, the biggest takeaway you can say in you know, one to five sentences for those that listen to this podcast today? A cyclical process. You know, we keep going different phases of life, different, different phases of any given day. I mean, that's how my life is going right now. Like the every day is throwing new challenges and I'm sure I'm not the only one. And I think we like to think things are clear and linear and point A to point B. And to kind of bring this, I'm going to say full circle, but maybe it's maybe full cycle is, is a better way to put it. You know, that's why I like these touch points of self-awareness, safety, release, realign, strengthen, and then bringing it to refine and that refine piece, giving you the spaciousness that this isn't a destination. It's not a place to go and, and stay there, but that you can, as you keep cycling through different phases of your life, different moments in your day, different uh, parts of your own personal evolution. You know, I, I've had some of those moments in these past few weeks where that one little thing, that one little thing threw me off. And when I was able to, to stop and realize, oh gosh, I have upgraded kind of my, some of my body systems and I'm coming from a different place. So really recognize the work you have done the, the space where you are now. And hopefully these, these touch points, body awareness, safety, release, realign, strengthen, refine can help you to navigate when you either feel too lost or too stressed. I love that. Yeah. I'm letting it all sink in right now. I'm just loving the fact that, you know, you can really do this inside yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't, there's no magical pill out there that does exist and you don't have to always run to the doctor and get prescription medication. I'm not a big believer in prescription medication. Um, however, there's people that do need it out there. So I won't neglect the fact that it is some people that really do need medication. However, for a large 95 to 90% of population, this is all within your grasp and your reach and you can do it. So I want to say, um, Jesse, thank you for being a guest on our final frontier Go beyond, above and beyond where we should go and keep going past that there's still more to go. And it's never ending. It's a constant journey. And I want to say this is Ron Johnson. And thanks for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Yes. Thank you again, Jesse. Um, and we're so glad to um, reconnect with you and 
with this wonderful information that you shared with our audience um, today. Thanks again. And again, um, the person you want to be is already within you. And just ask yourself, what can truly make me happy? Thank you again for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Thank you.